Let's take a look at driving morphs based on a distance to an object. This is a really powerful technique and uh, I think it's going to open up all kind of uh, possibilities uh, for production. So I'm going to go ahead and start by making a box, just a flat plane, and let's give it some segments, uh, say something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and center that, so F2. And let's select all the, the polys and B for bevel, and I'm just going to bevel them up something like this. Okay. And actually I'm going to undo and not have them tapered in so much. Okay. We can just still have them just as tall. Okay. And I'll commit to that. And I'm going to use the knife tool and I'm just going to cut across and just make a few segments, something like this. Okay. And just to help me build some morphs, I'm going to go ahead and, and create a, a weight map. So I'm going to come over to Weight Shade, and down here for W Weight, I'm going to hit in for new, uh, for new, and I'm just going to say Bend. No initial value, Create. Come over to the Map tab, Weights, in for Numeric, and we'll set it to Linear. And I'm just going to have the small end be 0, and the big end be 100%. Apply, and we can see that that translated over to our weight map. And um, let's go ahead and set up a, a morph target. So I'm going to go over to uh, rotate in for numeric, and I'm going to have the fall off set to weight map and M for morph in sorry new, and I'm going to set up a bend morph here. Create, and I'm just going to bend these something like this and then H for stretch and I'm just going to stretch them down a little bit okay so we're kinda of making a little wave here okay and I'm gonna go ahead and set my rotate back to none uh, so that the next time I go to use it I'm, I'm not surprised okay then I'm gonna go back to the base which is like this and I'm gonna set up a, a new morph target new and we'll just call this shrink create I'm going to grab these points and I'm just going to pull them down like so okay so we go to texture view let's go ahead and hit tab and um, we'll turn on sub patches and so I've got these small little shapes here for that I've got them bending like this uh, for the bend and here's our base Okay, so this is going to be the object we're going to use, and um, let's save this object out. So I'm just going to call this, let's just say grass for uh, lack of a, a better name, uh, but it can be glass, uh, grass blades or some kind of tentacles or tendrils, but we'll just say grass. Save, and let's send this over to layout. Okay, so now I have my object in layout. Let's go ahead and turn smoothing on. Surface editor, uh, smoothing. Let's give it a color just for fun. Uh, blue, that works. We'll throw a little bit of spec. Drop the gloss. Just to dress it up a little bit. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go to object, properties. And under the geometry tab, let's set the subdivision order to last. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, our displacement, but before we do, let's let's set up the object that's going to displace the the geometry. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. Let's add a null. So items null, and we'll call this dist for distance. It's going to be distance to this object, and I'm going to set up a ball, and let's just say um, three meters. Okay, and then I'm just going to raise that up. We'll start off over here, and then I'm going to go to the top view so that I can just kind of set up my my animation here. And that's the bottom, so we'll go to the top view. I was trying to figure out where my object went. I went to the bottom view, and this is a single-sided object, so I didn't see anything. Okay, so I'll come to frame, let's say frame 15, and I'll come over here, and then frame uh, 25. And I'll come over here. Let's just go to frame 20. Maybe we sink in here. And frame 10. 
come over here. So I'm just trying to go through the object and not cover the entire thing. I just want to kind of breeze through here. And then I'll go ahead and end it on frame 25. I'll end it a little farther away. And let's set our uh, timeline to 30 frames. We'll just focus on that small amount of time right there. So there's our object passing through. And let's have it affect our, um, our base object here uh, by using a displacement map. So I'm going to select that object, the, the grass object, and object properties, deform, and we'll go ahead and use the node editor. So we'll activate it and we'll open it up. So I'm going to close this down and I'll slide this over. I'm going to go ahead and, and go full screen with this just so that we can build it and then I can minimize it and we can work from there. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the distance to that that uh, null object. So I'm going to go over and add a spot info node. I'm going to come over here and add an item info. And for this item info, I'm going to double click and choose the distance, the dist, that's that null object. Okay, and I'm going to need a distant uh, node. So we'll come over to math vector and we're going to get the distance. So we're going to get the distance from here to here. And I want to further control uh, the distance, so I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to go over to gradient, and I'm going to plug the result of this distance into here. Now I'm going to want to plug from my gradient to uh, gradient into the displacement, uh, but I'm also going to want to plug some other things in there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a vector scale, and I'm going to plug the output from my gradient into scale because we're going to plug something into the vector. We're going to basically take advantage of those morphs. And then I'm going to plug the result into the displacement. Now I do want to further control um, this uh, distance here. So I'm going to double click and open up the gradient. And let's set, when it's close to it, let's set a high value, which white is a high value. And when it's farther away, let's set a low value, okay, which black is a low value. Okay, so we have this set up. And now we just need to take advantage of our morph. So I'm going to go to Add Node, Vertex Map, Morph Map. And I'm going to plug this, uh, let's say Vertex Map, let's choose Shrink. We'll keep the amount at 100%. We might go back and change that. And I'm going to plug that into Vector. Okay, so the distance to the, the null, and we're going to drive the, the morph with that. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and scrub through and you can see that it's pushing down the shapes okay but it's not controlling it's not the morph happening to the entire object at one time you can see right here okay so i'm going to adjust my i'm going to adjust my gradient a little bit this is why i wanted that gradient so that i can come in and let's just say four and let's four meters and let's scale that over a little bit more ah here we go okay so by adjusting that gradient it's controlling it even more so you can see remember this is one morph it, it looks like multiple morphs because it's um, based on a, the distance to that null so I don't have to have the entire morph happen at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is swap out that morph just so we can see uh, what it looks like when we use the bend. I'm, I'm curious myself. So I'm going to double click and change the vertex map to bend. Okay, Same setup, just swapping out morphs. And now we're bending this. Okay, Now I can decide the amount of the morph. Say I want to lighten that up double click the amount let's do 50 percent I'll minimize this and now it's only gonna use 50 percent of that okay no matter how close it gets now I can I'm not limited to just setting up one more if this is where we can really uh, get some interesting things I'm gonna copy this copy paste and double click and I'm gonna set this to hundred percent and go back to the shrink Okay, so if I plug this one in, we've got the shrink set up. Now, 
I want both of those, but I only have, if we look, I only have one input channel here. So what I need to do is use a, um, a node that can blend these two together and come down here. So I'm coming to add node, math, vector, add. Now, we'll note that there's an add for, but we can keep adding as many as we want. I'm just going to use add because we've only built two morphs, but if you had four morphs, grab the add four. And if you want to blend those together, you can do that as well. So you can use as many morphs as you want. Uh, I'm going to take both of these and plug them in right here. And let's go ahead and minimize this. And now I'm shrinking and bending. It's kind of cutting through here, so I'm going to want to adjust some of this. Um, but you, you can see that we're blending two different morphs. But again, it's not happening over the entire object. It's only happening where it gets really close to uh, the, the distant null. So I'm going to come over to my uh, bend and let's make it 25% and see what that looks like. Okay, I'm still cutting through just a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust, say, maybe we'll do 75% on our shrink. Minimize this. There we go. So as you can see, you can get some pretty nice effects. We're not using dynamics, just a displacement. and some of the ideas that came to mind uh, where this could be useful is say you want to do an, a big ocean wave and you don't want to um, have you know the wave morph all at once well you could wherever the the surfer is uh, you could have the null attached or make the the surfer the the distance object and have it start to morph more uh, as it goes through and and the wave starts um, uh, starts going going through. You could also set up and uh, and animate the amount. So this is just a real quick setup. Let's take a look at the the flow one one last time. This is a real quick setup for um, applying a morph based on the distance to an object. And of course, we're applying two morphs here. So this portion is controlling the distance. Okay, the gradient is allowing us to further control the distance. Um, so that we can, you know, we can have full control there. And we're just blending those together into the displacement to get this effect.